Hello and welcome to the Ruby and Roses podcast. My name is Addie and I am the artist and creator behind Ruby and Roses Yarn. And in today's video, I have a super special announcement to share with you all because I am launching a brand new line into the shop. I have 18 colorways to be exact to debut on my brand new line of non-superwash yarn. It is something I've been working on for months now and I could not be more hyped to show you all everything that I have planned for this update that is actually in the shop now. So click the down bar below Below to shop all of the colorways you'll be seeing throughout this entire video and I even have a brand new cast on to share that I literally cast on yesterday oops <laughs> literally cast this on yesterday I'm already so so in love with it and just obsessed with the entire base in general so this podcast episode is going to be a little bit uh, different format from my current video style so I will be pretty much sharing all about the new colorways I've created and dyed on this brand new line and this one project. This will be the only work in progress I'll be sharing today since it's the only one that I currently have cast on with non-superwash. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then grab a cup of something cozy and settle in for a long episode of just chatter about what's been inspiring me lately. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and jump right in because I am, yeah, so, so obsessed with each and every one of these babies. So basically what, just kind of like a little, little bit of a backstory with why I started creating non-superwash yarn because I've pretty much only done non or superwash colorways and the only non-superwash I've ever dabbled in is my rose cloud base which I actually have a skein here of a new colorway and this is the only base that I've ever um, yeah just dyed with non-superwash it's technically a non-superwash blend although a lot of dyers do dye it the same way as they do their superwash blends and it's just been really really fascinating since I have been dyeing this for a few years at this point and just getting to treat it the same as a non-superwash and see if there were any differences so for instance all of my superwash colorways are dyed in a specific way that I've been kind of finally honing over the last five years now, which is crazy to say. <laughs> and the non-superwash has a very special treatment at the beginning. So it's all scoured. So that's like a technical term, I guess. It just basically means you wash it and wash all of that extra lanolin out, wash any sort of vegetable matter or anything like that. Um, these bases that I'm offering are extra fine merino, same 20 micron count as my superwash blends, like what I'm wearing right here is my superwash yarn and so it takes a lot of time at the beginning before it even touches the dye and then it goes through a lengthy process of actually being in my dye bath being in the acid and all of those things and then also a long cooling process and then a long wash process at the end so it's just a huge t uh, labor of love takes a lot of time and effort for sure compared to super wash dyeing but I found the process to be very inspiring and I, in particular, when creating all of these non-superwash colorways and just setting out to have a collection based off of non-superwash, I wanted to make sure that I could really capture the heavy saturation that I love in my superwash colorways. So if you've been around for a while, you'll know that in every collection, I typically have a colorway that's just very, very dark, very saturated, just like, a very jewel tone to the extreme basically and that's really my jam that's where like I don't know my inspiration thrives you could say and you all seem to really love those colorways as well like reputation has been one of my most popular colorways to date um, lilacs at midnight in my last collection just did incredibly well and I just really wanted to make sure that I kind of had that same saturation and really rich kind of edge to all of my colorways and I actually ended up just continuing to do prototype after prototype of all of these colorways just until I got them just right. So like for instance, a great example of that are these two right here. So this is my Sangria colorway and something to note about all of these colors. So they're not technically new developments. So they're not new colorways that I've designed specifically for the update. However, they are our classic colorways that are some of our best sellers but I did reformulate some of the recipes to make them a little bit richer to make sure that it had that same sort of saturation and like in this case silky edge to a colorway that I just really love on Superwash. 
and I think in future I've decided I'm going to, in every collection I do, try to dye them on non-superwash. And there are certain colors that, in my opinion, just as my artist, I, I don't know, brain, I guess, I just really didn't love. And if I don't love something, I really don't want to put it out on the market. So I decided to just not do certain colors on non-superwash. And I think going forward, that will just kind of be something unique that I do, I'm sure. Um, just wanting to, yeah, always present like the best quality of work I can and just something that I love. So yeah, in future collections, like the one I have coming maybe in like January or February, I'm planning on having select colorways available on these non-superwash bases. So anyways, all loved like truly loved colorways that have been around for a very long time and some of them are relatively new it's a little teaser there <laughs> from last collection and they're all on yeah non-superwash so this is sangria and this is one that i am just so in love with and as you can see it's just very rich and it almost has just like a silky appearance to it and then Persian was another one that was like the hardest to capture. And believe it or not, is actually the saturated in real life, which is just wild to me that this is non-superwash. And I have kind of yet to see um, like non-superwash this saturated. And I just didn't know if it'd be possible. So I'm so excited that it is. And yeah, so these will be coming in the pre-order. Like I said, they're available now. And I wanted to also chat a little bit about the difference between superwash and non-superwash, even though I'm sure you all know the difference because non-superwash is incredibly popular. I feel like people have been knitting with it for ever since I became a knitter, for sure, probably way before that. And just um, since it is like the natural um, untreated fiber and it's, yeah, it has some very unique characteristics. And since I've specialized in superwash dyeing, I think this will be a really fun new chapter for us to kind of experiment with and dabble in it in future so so yeah this is the first curated collection that i'm doing on non-superwash and all right i will go ahead and spend some time like i said chatting about non-superwash and the differences and then i'll spend some time uh chatting about just sort of the logistics of this pre-order because it's a little bit more I don't know, unique than our usual pre-orders. It's sort of a hybrid between ready to ship and a pre-order with a six to eight week processing time, which is a huge plus considering most of our pre-orders are about a 16 week processing time because they're a lot more detailed with new colorways and just it's just a big production, I guess. <laughs> Whereas this one, I wanted you to be able to cast on uh, any projects that you were planning to make after shopping this pre-order around the first week of December and just getting to work on all the cozy things during the winter months instead of having to wait for the spring season. So yeah, basically some really, really fun things about non-superwash that I've been learning that are different from superwash is that and just kind of like with me just getting to knit with it myself, like I will go ahead and just show you my cast on real quick um, because I literally just cast this on yesterday. Um, we had a bit of a car ride that we were taking to a different, different city and it was just perfect car knitting. And this is the hipster hat by Hohi Loca, or by Hohi Locatelli, <laughs> by Petite Knit, um, not Hohi Locatelli, but it's basically the um, like, it's going to be pretty tight. It's on a 16 inch circular right now and it's not stretching a ton. So I think it'll be a really nice gauge, but it is the hipster hat by Petite Knit and it is a two by two ribbed hat. And her, the decreases on this, I wish I had a copy of the pattern to show you, but it is beautiful. I love the decreases so much. And here is kind of what they look like in cake form. And there's just so many beautiful speckles in there. And I love the decreases. I love getting to work with it myself. And I chose my Whispering Pines colorway, which is my favorite speckle from the collection. And it's just working up so well. And I feel like if I had to like pick one word to describe non-superwash versus like knitting with superwash, like in this sweater, I feel like the word I would pick is sturdy. Like it's just such a really 
form-fitting fiber feel to it. Um, it has a bit of a toothy edge, but it still has that element of really luxurious feeling fiber. And it's just, yeah, very soft, very um, still just a very different feel though, because it's just very like stretchy, but it, like, it has elasticity, but it doesn't stretch. It's not gonna like um, fall in the same way that Superwash would and have that really, uh, I don't know, unique tendency to not grow. So for instance, my Superwash cardigans and sweaters tend to grow slightly over time with wear and just kind of the gravity pulling it down just with use. Whereas Superwash is historically known to really maintain its structure. So it's great for color work knits, color work mittens, things that have a little bit more uh, hard wearing edge to them. I know a lot of people love knitting uh, non-Superwash socks because you can kind of get them to felt a little bit, which can help with keeping it from wearing out faster. So I know that's a huge pro with that. Um, some people even purposefully felt it because you can felt non-superwash, which can be a pro and a con all at the same time, depending on how you utilize that. But you can have like knit something really large, for instance, and then felt it to shrink it and then have that be an even denser gauge slash like fabric at that point. And that's also something really cool about non-superwash and it also can retain its um, it can retain its temperature a lot differently than superwash fibers. For instance, if you are knitting a spring top out of some non-superwash and you wear it in the heat of summer, it's actually said to be keeping you cool instead of making you warm as a superwash blend would do. So I thought that was super fascinating to find out that like it can kind of retain that temperature. So like it can keep you really warm in the winter cooler months and then it can keep you cool in the warmer months of summer. So I just thought that was a really interesting twist and another reason that makes it really all purpose for a lot of different types of things. Um, I also think like it's gonna make the coziest hat because it is super dense. And I feel like the bases that I have are similar to my Superwash blends in the um, almost the fiber content and just the plies and just kind of the um, appearance, not necessarily the actual characteristics when wearing and making things with them. But this is my Rustic Rose base and it's the non-superwash counterpart pretty much to my soft rose base which is our most popular fingering weight blend so it's really like great to kind of sub that out if it's something that is like um only your your project's only in non-superwash so the only other really like big thing that i wanted to like kind of touch on is just how i think it's so interesting that like superwash just takes the speckles i mean from the dyer's perspective superwash can really like just be a perfect palette for those really crisp micro speckles so i love doing micro speckles as as a dyer i just think it's so fun and you can really have different layers of speckles you can even have like um what i like to call my watercolor effect where you can just have your water level kind of high so the the powder blends as it falls through the water basically in your pan and and you can kind of control that and blend your own colors as it's the gravity's pulling pulling that dye down. It's just a beautiful effect because it kind of looks like a watercolor painting in the way that you can have like two like of the primary colors like for instance it's like the most basic example but like the two primary colors together and then once they hit the water they blend. So you have like that perfect level of that complementary color of those blended together at different ratios, right? Because you could have like a little bit more of like one color and then a little bit less of the other and it just blends beautifully. So I think that non-superwash also kind of has that effect with the watercolor, but not necessarily the micro speckles. So it's just really interesting to see the difference as just, I don't know, creating speckled yarn. Like for instance, Whispering Pines, I think it's just lovely on non-superwash. You can see how all of the different speckles just really blended together and had more of a watercolor effect than it does on superwash. You can kind of see like it just has all of those really like blended blended colors. And I also have a skein of that on my Erin base. And you can just kind of see that again in like more of a speckled form. And it has that beautiful like earthy yellow in there. 
So yeah, this is definitely my favorite color to dye out of the entire collection. So I'm secretly hoping it's a bestseller because I really want to dye this colorway up like crazy. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's just really fun. So I love knitting with this on, like, on, on the hat. I just think it's, it's so beautiful. And for instance, there's other colorways like Sail Away, which is the exact same color that I knit in this sweater. However, this is my superwash worsted weight base. And this is my non-superwash fingering base. And also just as an aside, I really hope I'm not mixing up superwash and non-superwash, like in just what I'm saying, because it's been really hard for me not to continue to get confused at the studio since this is like the first week I've actually had non-superwash in production alongside superwash. I'm just kind of like a little disoriented sometimes. So my apologies if that happens and I'll try to like make sure it doesn't, but this is non superwash, and what's super cool is this is supposed to be a much more finely speckled colorway. Like I can kind of show you, I'll scooch up a little bit and show you what it looks like on my sweater. But this is kind of like, you can see those really crisp speckles. Whereas on this, it's a lot more blended. And you still have that lovely, like cool toned, creamy base, but the speckles definitely tend to blend a bit more. So you can kind of see that. And it's just really beautiful. And my favorite part is that right there. I don't know if you saw the salmon, the beautiful, beautiful salmon color. And it was actually a really fun surprise. So I was dyeing this colorway up and it's very hard to see what it looks like in the dye pans. But once I pulled it out of the oven and saw it after it was washed, I realized like all of them had this beautiful like light salmon color to it. And that's not in the superwash version because where I put the dye in the superwash, it just kind of stays there. Whereas the non-superwash, it just like all kind of blends together, which is really kind of fun and scary all at the same time. But um, it was, yeah, it was a really cool effect. So I'm really excited with that surprise and it just makes me fall in love with this colorway even more. And another really cool thing, I'm also adding in all of my colorways that will be coming in the update are available on Rose Cloud as well. And I have decided to add in Rose Cloud and I thought, how cool would it be to have Rose Cloud available in the update and take it through the exact same process as my non superwash, like I previously mentioned of like pre-washing it to scour it and then cooking it for longer and having the acid process be a little bit different and then the after wash process a bit different. And I wanted to just see how that would look. And I really wish I would have brought a skein of Whispering Pines on Cloud from like a year ago when I dyed it versus like recently, like this last week for the photo samples and just showed you because the the results were insane. They were completely different. And I think that's really cool to find out that I like just in future always wanna dye my cloud in that way because I think it just is so like the, the just the, the saturation, the preciseness of the speckles, it's just perfect. So also a huge shout out to, um, Oh, I, why can't I think of her name? Rachel of uh, ZZ Textiles. I'm so sorry, Rachel. <laughs> Names are not my strong suit. I'm trying to get better at that. But yeah, thank you so much, Rachel, if you're watching, for all of your help with figuring out how to dye non-superwash because I seriously don't think I could have done it without her. I was asking her so many questions and just, she was so sweet, so helpful. And yeah, just anyways, I'm so grateful for that because she's taught me so much about all of these things because it's really hard to learn all of these things about fiber and how to dye yarn on your own because there's only so much you can do with trial and error before like you need to know the fundamentals, I guess. So anyways, sail away on Surrey is just so beautiful. And I just wanted to show that to you real quick. Cause look at those speckles. Just so pretty. So yeah, I really, really love how a few of these like turned out on the cloud. And also like Persian on cloud is just another level of gorgeousness as well. It's just so pretty. So yeah, I'm gonna be sharing a few little close-ups here and there, but I just think that's what really has made this a very special process of getting to learn all about how the dye just like takes the fiber or how the fiber takes the dye. And I really love how it turned out on typewriter as well. This is actually, I've saved two skeins. I have another one over here. 
I have two skeins that I've saved on my new Aran weight base because I plan on casting on a second hat probably later tonight, to be honest. And I'm going to be knitting this one for my husband, Devin, because he has yet to receive a hand knit hat. <laughs> I actually knit him one, uh, if you'll remember, I think like last September, and it just turned out way too small. I don't know why my gauge was so tight. And I, yeah, it's, it doesn't even fit me. I don't know what I was thinking. And so I basically am going to be knitting a hat by Alicia Plummer, I think. Um, I think it's like Wayfield or something like that. Um, I will, uh, I have, I'll have to print the pattern out and cast it on, but this is just going to be so lovely, I think. And I'm going to be knitting the, uh, knitting it on air and weight. So yeah, it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful, rich gray. So that'll be super fun. And I can't wait to share that on here as well, as soon as that gets cast on. But I will go ahead and walk you through each of the 18 colorways quite quickly, <laughs> um, just to kind of give you a bit of a preview of what to expect with this update. Um, so first up is obviously Sail Away, just my second favorite speckled, which is surprising. It's probably my second favorite because I've already knit a sweater out of it. So I'm kind of like, it's beautiful, but onto the, onto the next colorway. But I still have saved these two skeins in my stash, so. You never know. I want to knit maybe like a pair of mittens out of it at some point, but that will be very far down the line because I already have too many projects in my queue that I'm like seriously considering casting on. But anyways, this is just a classic, so beautiful. Like imagine a um, hat knit with like a skein of cloud and a skein of soft or the soft version of um, my non super wash, which is rustic rose. I just think that would be so beautiful. And then another colorway, coming is Candlewick. This is one I was like referencing earlier. It's just this beautiful mauve uh, colorway that has a little bit of a navy kind of wash. It's just a very classic look I feel like and it's very sophisticated. I think you could really dress this colorway like up or down depending on what pattern you chose and I just think it's really really pretty. You can kind of see like a little bit of a close-up of that one. So yeah just a really really fun colorway. And then we have writer's block which i feel like this is such a classic shade on non-superwash and i actually like to be honest added this colorway in because i feel like every palette needs a skein of writer's block in it so if you're for instance purchasing the bundle of the entire collection like the sampler of all of them i think this is going to be such a vital addition to the palette because it just goes with everything it really does it has equal parts gray and brown in it so it's just like that perfectly even taupe and it's just really really well suited for any sort of palette because if you have a lot of different cool tones and warm tones together this one just ties all of it together really really nicely without being too far like cool leaning or too far on the warm tone side so I really love it for that reason so it was really fun posting about this on Instagram and hearing all of the projects that y'all have made with uh, writer's block and how you've added it into your palettes because it's just, yeah, so versatile and I love it for that reason. And then the next one is Sangria and this one has my heart because I don't know, I feel like, I don't know if you guys are like this, I have like cloud fuzz on this. <laughs> um, Surrey is getting on everything, especially the dark colors, but I don't know if you guys are like this, but if something's really challenging for me to create or just like challenging in general, I always just end up loving it more. It's just something about that. So since this one was super hard and it's still really hard to dye, it's just like the prettiest thing. <laughs> so this is Sangria and it's actually surprisingly showing up pretty well on video. I think if I hold it back, it even kind of gets a little bit better. It's just this beautiful wine colored, um, just rich plum shade and it's a little bit more blue than it's showing up here. I would definitely recommend, um, just, there we go. I think that's a little bit better. I tried to take the best photos I could of this colorway. It was a really hard one to edit, but I think I got the shade true to life and that's always a huge plus when photographing a really tricky colorway. But this is Sangria and I have a skein of Rose Erin and Rustic Rose. And then the next one is Golden Alley. And then I brought a skein of Golden Alley on Cloud to share because it's just so, so beautiful. And it has just a lot of different layers. It's one that's a lot more variegated than my other colorways. And it still has those beautiful speckles of like Aubergine, some speckles of some magenta. 
it has those uh, different shades of like burnt sienna. It has a little bit of moss green in there as well. And then like some navy. And of course that neon yellow, that's so fun. So yeah, I think this is super cool. This is not in my typical like wheelhouse of colors. It's not my typical like go-tos when it comes to like picking a color palette. Um, and I say that, yet I do have like a cube here. Maybe I'll have to like add, add these two into it because it just definitely fits the vibe. But yeah, I really love these two skeins. I think they just turned out so lovely. And, um, and just like all of them, this is just the two that I'm holding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is Golden Alley, and then I have Rose Erin, and then, or the uh, Rustic Rose Erin, and then my Rose Cloud base. And I really, really love, I can, well, I'll wait and show color palettes later, because I have a lot of different color combo ideas that I want to share. If you're thinking about knitting something with this collection that's color work, or that's a cabled sweater that may be striped, or like just a striped sweater, a striped mittens, there's just so many options for different color combos. Or if you want to knit, like what I'm considering doing, having a matching hat and mitten set, I think that would be super, super fun. And so yeah, typewriter is just like I said, such a classic. I just think this is the prettiest gray. It has a lot of like rosy kind of violet undertones to it. It also surprisingly has a really rich like kind of green undertone as well, which sounds kind of crazy, but I would definitely say like it has a lot of the violet and green undertones to it. And I feel like if you purchase it, you'll get what I'm saying, but <laughs> I don't know if it's picking it up on camera that well, but it's just, yeah, such a beautiful neutral. And I'm actually really excited to start knitting with it and cast on Devin's hat with this shade because I don't typically gravitate towards neutrals that are like tried and true neutrals. Um, I typically go for the bright and fun colors, as you know, but I'm really excited about it. I think it'll be really, really lovely. And then the next one is sea glass. So sea glass, you guys, I love this color and I'm so excited that it's coming in the update because I haven't restocked this colorway in like I think a good few months. I only had a few skeins in the shop just like on random bases but I never had like a true restock and I'm just so excited to get to bring this one back because it's always heavily requested. It's one that's just I don't know it just kind of glows I don't know if you can kind of see that but it's very light it's definitely a pastel but there is that richness and depth to it nonetheless and it's definitely has a bit of a minty kind of I don't know minty wash over it yet it's still a very true blue color and I think that that just adds again another level of dimension to it so I'll show you kind of what it looks like close up the lights are a little bit a little bit strange I think today but it's not quite as green as that's showing but I feel like that's kind of more accurate. But look at the just the variation of, of the different uh, tones on Erin. I just think that's so fun. And just the just the base in itself, like you can just see like the squish factor. Like it's just so, so squishy. So yeah, I love it for that reason. I'm actually having a sample made with this at the moment, and she just sent me a photo of the back panel on the secret design that's coming. Not, I'm not designing it, but a secret like uh, sample that's coming soon. And I just like audibly gasped. Like it is just so perfect to knit up. Like I can't even tell you. And I think that's why I'm even more excited to knit the hat for Devin out of it because it's just such a squishy base. Like this is probably one of my all time favorite bases and I haven't even knit with it yet. Like that's how obsessed I am. So like if you're on the fence about what like base to purchase, like get a few skeins of air and knit yourself like the coziest like hat and mitten set ever. And just like, I don't know, just so squishy. So anyways, little shout out to the base, but this is sea glass and it's just such a beautiful, um, beautiful representation of what it looks like on non superwash. And then we have Persian. And then I've already shown you what it looks like on cloud, but I actually have a skein here of Aaron. So this is the, oops, this is the Aaron weight base. And this is what it looks like on Rustic Rose. And it's definitely a lot more rich in person. And you can also really see the variation between those like really evergreen um, shades as well as that really rich turquoise. Um, the turquoise really pops. It just adds such a level to, to the colorway and I just really love it for that reason. So I feel like the further back I get, <laughs> the more true to life, more true to life it is. But yeah, I really love how 
uh, Persian came out for sure. And then the next one, let's see, I grabbed my basket. The next one is Whispering Pines, which I've already shared. I'm trying to share these in order of how I released them on Instagram, if I can remember all of that info. And the next one is Glowing Indigo. And this one literally glows. I hope it's showing up, but I think, yeah, I think it kind of is. Like, it is so rich and saturated. It almost has like a black lit neon effect to it. And I kind of love it. Like, it's incredible. I think this is just so vibrant. And I also think that it can kind of fit into the neutral palette as well, which I know sounds crazy, but hear me out. If you knit something with this and it's like an accent or like a pop of color, I think if you're wearing with like black, like if you have like a beautiful black um, blouse or something and you knit like, I don't know, maybe a cowl for the winter months, like I think that would be so gorgeous and like such a fun like fashion statement and like a cool pop of color. And this is actually our most popular tonal from Flowers Gone Wild, which is the last pre-order collection that I released. And I just think it's super fun to get to bring this back. I also have a skein here of what it looks like on Rustic Rose versus Rustic Rose Erin. And I just really love like how vibrant it is. I got it just the same level, like the exact same level of saturation on our super wash bases, which I feel like was such a score because I really wanted to make sure it still had that glowing effect because otherwise I probably wouldn't have added it to the palette. And we all need this in the palette, right? Like it's so perfect. So kind of matches this bag over here, <laughs> but I, I really love glowing indigo. And it's funny because this is, so, I, I know it's a really bright color, but in my eyes, it's just kind of like more neutral for some reason, because it's not like a neon pink or something. It just, I don't know, it feels like classic, I guess is, is the word I would, I would use instead of neutral, but very classic shade. And I've talked to Devin into letting me knit him a pair of mittens in Glowing Indigo because <laughs> I really, really want to knit with this. And I'm already knitting a lot of different like things. I, I don't know. I could knit maybe my grandpa a pair of mittens in this if, if Devin really doesn't like the shade, but because um, I know he would love it because it's super saturated. But I don't know. So I want to either knit a pair of mittens for Devin or, or my grand grandpa, but um, I just think it's such a fun color and I love how it looks with typewriter. So that's why I feel like it's meant to be for Devin. I just think that would be so fun. So anyways, I need to find some good mitten patterns before I cast on all of the things, but I just really, really want to knit with all of these different colorways and the different bases and all of those fun things. And then another colorway that is from Flowers Gone Wild is Periwinkle Lace, which is the prettiest shade of periwinkle that I've ever seen. I just love it so much. And again, it's just a little more accurate <laughs> back here for some reason, but it's just a lovely shade of periwinkle with some really soft lavender notes to it. It also just has uh, a lot of just little tiny micro speckles throughout of like a really beautiful blue. And I think that just is super fun. And it also has a lot of variation in the hues. So it kind of has, um, it, it's it's a lot more tonal than some of my other like semi-solid colorways. And all of my tonals have a lot of just different variation to it. It's not a like complete solid throughout. And I think that adds just a lot more dimension to your projects because I feel like that's why we all love hand dyed yarn, right? Like it, it just has that little element to it. So we have periwinkle lace. And then after that, we have in bloom, which is again, last colorway from Flowers Gone Wild. <laughs> I wanted to bring a few back because I just really love it. And this one is wound pretty loosely because I, I just did it by hand a few minutes ago. So, so I apologize for the, <laughs> for how crazy it kind of looks, but, um, but yeah, anyways, I am keeping the skein for myself. I don't know what I'll make with it if I ever cast anything on, but it's just too pretty. I had to keep it. So you can kind of see like all those beautiful like micro speckles that have kind of faded. It's a really good representation of it like right here. You can kind of see that. And it has this really, really soft green that's a really like honeydew melon green almost. And it also has some beautiful like yellow uh, wash throughout. And I just think it really just provides the perfect canvas for all of those really fun little speckles. And then we will also be adding into the shop fresh linen on non-superwash. Again, I think it's just a really fun addition to any palette, specifically if you're like using a lot of different colors and you want to have something that's either like held together all the way throughout and have like a really beautiful marled effect, 
or if you're in looking at doing a color work sweater and you want to have like a beautiful cream kind of stranded throughout I think fresh linen is a great choice for that um, this is our undyed uh, yarn and we take it through all of the same washing processes as our uh, other colorways so it's washed and in this case it's also scoured so it's getting two washes <laughs> and it has our signature scent on it which is always just such a uh, plus when adding to the experience of your makes so super fun this is what it looks like on Erin and I think there's just so many possibilities with all the different things you can do with that and then we have rosy cheeks which is just the beaut like such a beautiful light pink and it's also a color that's used in the color work of my sweater. So if you actually wanted to recreate this sweater in non-superwash with this update, you totally could. I will go ahead and just like tell you what pattern it is in case you're wondering. This is the Lion sweater, again, by Petit Knit. And I made up my own color work for the cuffs as well as on the hem. And it's pretty simple. I have a picture on my Instagram, but I can just kind of, again, just show you a bit more close up. And just in case you want to like take a uh, take a screenshot of that, <laughs> but I used uh, Sailway as the main color, and then Kana Material Girl Anemone, and then Rosy Cheeks is the bind off color and that light color throughout. And um, so that's kind of what I did with since Rosy Cheeks is such a beautiful complementary color um, with Sailway. And this one, I slightly uh, modified the recipe of rosy cheeks because I wanted to make it a little bit more pink. So if you have a skein of superwash and you hold it up against this, this is actually a bit more pink. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I, I don't know, like I said, I really wanted to love all of the colorways I was bringing to this collection. And I kept dyeing rosy cheeks and it just looked really yellow and I didn't love that yellow effect. And so that's why I added more pink and it just made it a little bit more of a cool tone since this pink is, is a warm tone pink, but it has, I don't know, once it completely covers the yarn, it just looks a little bit more cool tone, which, which I like. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just, yeah, very, very pretty. And I think this is like, again, very accurate. So it's a little bit darker than the rosy cheeks that I used, but I think it would still be lovely nonetheless. And then we also have um, again, I can just go ahead and show you all the colorways since we're running a bit short on time. <laughs> so I've been chatting too much, but here are all the colorways that I used in my sweater that I just mentioned. And this is what they look like on non superwash. And can you even tell the difference between these and my superwash like skeins from the sweater? Like, I just think that's so wild. I love that so much. So these three, I think, again, would just be stunning in like a three color anything, really. Like you can make a three color cowl. Um, I definitely would recommend adding rosy cheeks in there because I think it just makes it a little bit more um, like tied. It just ties it together really well. Like that's just super pretty. So we have Kana starting at the top and then Anemone, rosy cheeks and Material Girl at the bottom. It's just very, very pretty. So yeah, those are all of the colorways except the very last speckled color that I'm bringing to the shop, or that is in the shop. And this is Calliope. So this is another one that I slightly um, redesigned the recipe for and made it a little bit lighter. So you can see the speckles are a little bit more pastel. It's not quite as vibrant and rich as uh, my Superwash Calliope. And it just has this beautiful like coral. It has a really lovely mauve wash throughout all of it. And it has just a lot of like really bright magenta sections. It has, um, again, that really soft blue blended with some really bright greens and yellows. And yeah, it's just a really fun color. I, I've i always loved dyeing Calliope. I think it's just super fun and it's very, very bright. I think this would be so beautiful compared with Material Girl and sail away wouldn't that be very very electric <laughs> we also have these two together which i think would be super fun and i think this would be really cool like in a textured stitch pattern that uses two colors so this is calliope and then sail away and then i guess we could just go ahead and get right into all of the different color combos because let me tell you i have so many ideas with all of these colors so we'll go ahead and start with these three which I think is perfect for color work. We have Sangria, Candlewick, and 
uh, writer's block. And I think this would be super cozy because I know a lot of color work patterns call for like a light, medium, and a dark. And I think that if you're having a pattern that calls for those things and you wanna make sure that they're all like having the same amount of balance in the design, I think this would be a really fun option. And it's also just very perfect for fall in my opinion. And if likewise, if you wanted to do one that was a little bit more pink and bright or like a little bit more orange, I feel like this would be perfect as well. We have Kana, Anemone, and Rosy Cheeks. So yeah, these are just like two options that are both very different looks, which are fun. And you could also do the exact same thing with like these, for instance. Granted, they're both kind of like a medium and a dark. Something like this. So we have sea glass, Persian, and typewriter, which would be really fun. And you can swap out the typewriter and add in like glowing indigo, for instance. That would be really fun. Or you could do, you could do these three together which would be, I guess, more like this, maybe. The periwinkle lace typewriter and glowing indigo would be super fun. Just like a lot of really, really rich colors to choose from. And then if you wanted one that was a bit more of a like five color design, you have Candlewick, Writer's Block Typewriter, Golden Alley, and Sangria. I think that'd be super fun. And I just love how the labels turned out for these. Just think they're so fun. And yeah, I just really, really love all about all the things. And then another fun one would be these right here. Like, look at this combo. Oh my word, it's so perfect. We have sea glass, Persian, whispering pines, and glowing indigo. Beautiful. And then for those of you that are obsessed with more of a pastel look, I think this would be so beautiful. We have periwinkle lace, sea glass, in bloom, and fresh linen. That would be so pretty. Just a lot of different colors. And then if you wanted one that was a bit more pink, could do this, which is in bloom, anemone, and rosy cheeks. Let me see. I think that was all I had off the top of my head. I really love how Candlewick and um, Sail Away look though. I think this would be a really underrated combo because it's just so, um, so interesting like i think it would be really fun to use this in color work which sounds a bit crazy but i think it would be really cool because the navy um speckles and sail away would pair really really nicely with candlewick and it wouldn't blend in any way like you wouldn't have any sort of sections that are um like just completely lost in the design so i think this would be super fun for like color work mittens or a color work hat design and if you don't already follow me on Instagram, I would recommend clicking the link down below and checking out my story highlights because, or my stories in the coming days, depending on when you're seeing this, because the Sunday, um, which will be the day after this goes live, I will be doing a style guide. So I will be sharing all of my favorite patterns that I think would be perfectly suited for the non-superwash update. That's gonna be sweaters. I have a few um, different mitten patterns. I have a ton of hat recommendations. Like just a quick run through. Like I think the Manhattan hat would be gorgeous. Oslo hat, um, the Vienna set, I, that's a mitten and really beautiful scarf set um, by Petite Knit. And we have just like uh, the Siege hat, I think by Tannis Fiber Arts. And just so many beautiful hat designs. I think are just, there's just so many. And the, um, Oh, there's one more that I was really looking into. 
it's another hat by Petite Knit, but I can't remember. It's not the hipster hat and it's not the Oslo hat, but there was another one. But anyways, I have all of it written down, so I don't even have my notes in front of me with the style guide. So make sure to check that out if you want some more inspo when it comes to patterns and stuff. But yeah, I cannot wait to get to work on this more and just, yeah, I'm so excited with that. And I think as far as combos go, I'm trying to think if I have any extra. The only other thing I really wanted to share is that I am going to be going to Rhinebeck this year. So we will be attending the New York Sheep and Wolf Festival and we will also be doing a pop-up the um, 17th and 18th at Yarn Farm Kingston, which is in Kingston and it's a yarn store and wine bar. And we will be there from 12 to 9 p.m. So it's just gonna be a very long two days, but I'm so excited. I'm going to be bringing the entire non-superwash palette. So I will be bringing all of the samples from all of the colorways that I just shared with you. And we will be having them available on those four bases. So I think it's just gonna be an amazing time to get to like mix and match and project plan with you all, which is some of my favorite things to do and come up with palettes that are just customized to, um, yeah, to your, your preferences and your shopping lists and things like that. So if you're going to Rhinebeck, please make sure to stop by and say hi. I'd love to meet you and I'd love to get to um, show you the yarn and you can squish it in person and see how lovely it is. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The bases are, are truly amazing though, but yeah, the colors are fun too. But anyways, I'm very excited about it. So we will be there um, the weekend or the few days before Rhinebeck and we will also be there on Saturday and I will be doing a meetup on the hill and just arriving at the hill sometime. Um, I think, I'm thinking around like 11 to noon, I threw up an Instagram question on my stories a few days ago and it seems to be the consensus that everyone wants to do the meetup um, in the late morning. So stay tuned for it, for that. If you, again, follow me on Instagram, I'll be announcing like actual times there. But yeah, if you see me during Rhinebeck weekend, like definitely come by and say hi. I just, I love getting to put like faces to the name uh, since I do message you guys via email, via, you know, comments on YouTube and Instagram DMs or, or comments on Instagram. And it's just really fun to get to like, I don't know, have that memory of like putting the yeah, like I said, the face to the name. So if you are there, definitely, like I said, stop by and uh, we will be at that yarn, uh, the yarn store those two days. So I think it'll be a really fun, fun weekend for sure. So after that, actually, it's going to be a really long two weeks because we're going to be leaving. Um, as this is going up, we will be actually on the road to Vermont. And I'm so excited because we will be spending a few days with my aunt and uncle and their little kiddos. And then we will be heading to New York and then doing the show and Rhinebeck weekend. And then we will be heading to um, Canada for uh, like a day and a half. And we're gonna see Niagara Falls and I'm gonna see it for the first time and I'm really excited about it. And then we're gonna stay like a day in um, like Canada and just get to tour around a little bit as we're driving to Michigan. And we're actually meeting some of our friends at a really cozy like Michigan cottage. Um, and they invited us along on their trip, which was super sweet. So we're able to, uh, yeah, get to kind of come on the, on the end of that. And then after Michigan, then we'll head back home. So it's going to be kind of a really long, long tour, but it's going to be super fun. So I cannot wait for like a really good, um, good break for fall and get to do all things autumn and have like cozy apple cider and get to, um, yeah, just have the Brussels sprouts at Rhinebeck again, which is so good. I highly would recommend if you're, um, yeah, going to Rhinebeck, but yeah, that's kind of it besides the fact that I wanted to share the colorway that I created exclusively for Yarn Farm Kingston for Rhinebeck and I actually my inspo photo since I'm not editing this video I can't throw up a photo but I will have it on Instagram after Rhinebeck weekend and it's a beautiful photo of the New York City skyline and I have it right here it is, believe it or not, it's at sunset, so that's why it's pink, because you know I had to make it pink. <laughs> and I just got to add in so many really f just fun colors. It was really uh, like such a fun time getting to dye it because I actually, for the first time, just again, I don't know if you all care about the little dyer's notes that I <laughs> give, maybe not, um, but something really fun about this colorway that I've always wanted to do. 
Uh, my friend actually gave me this idea, um, saying like, have I, well, she asked if I'd ever blended my dye powders together to create my own color before I speckle it. Cause I was describing like what I said earlier about how like it blends in the water. And she's like, well, have you ever like preemptively blended those dyes? And I was like, you know what? That's really cool. And she told me this like a year and a half ago, by the way. But for some reason it popped into my head as I was dying this and I blended together a really beautiful like crimson red with a really bright neon pink that I have. And it just created this beautiful like neon, like, I mean, neon crimson red, I guess that's pink, but um, it's it's really, really lovely. I love it. It's just like super fun. So it's a very rich, like that's pretty accurate. It's just a really bright pop of red because I feel like I wanted something that was red, but I didn't want it to be burgundy or something like that. We have beautiful gold sections. Again, that really pretty green. We have a little bit of navy speckles. You can kind of see that like right here. And it also has a flash of that little section of neon purple as well. Um, and the neon purple is basically, uh, I custom blended a, let's see if it focuses. I custom blended the neon purple to make it uh, look just like my meadow sweet tonal. So anyways, I really love this colorway. The extras will be in the shop. Um, I might throw up a YouTube post for all of you here on YouTube when I add that into our online website. But this is actually, I dyed it on non-superwash because I had to make sure it could fit the palette. And I think there's so many combo options for this one along with the pre-ordered items. Like just a few would be like these right here. I think this would be a stunning combo to really bring out those blue tones with Periwinkle Lace and Glowing Indigo. And I also think that my personal favorite is Candlewick and Sangria. I just think it's super soft and subtle and just really just brings out all of those lovely tones of mauve. And then I also wanted to share that what it looks like on Superwash. So you can see the speckles are kind of a bit more precisely speckled and has a bit more of that, um, like a little bit less blending. But I'm actually very happy with how it came out um, on both. And they're just very similar. This one, I think is, it's a pretty good representation of like how Non-superwash is a lot more muted and it just has a lot more of that watercolor effect, whereas superwash is a lot more like, it just kind of like is vibrant. It has those micro speckles, it has the speckles and the variation is very like distinctive, whereas it's a lot more blended in non-superwash. So it'll be really fun to get to bring these with us to New York and add the extras into the online shop probably a few days after the event. So stay tuned for that. I guess that would be around like the 20th of October that it will be in the shop. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this really chatty <laughs> video of me getting to share all of the things that I've been working on and just obsessing over lately with this brand new non-superwash collection. So let me know down below if you decide to do a little bit of shopping and if you do shop, make sure to let me know what colorways you picked out and what patterns you're interested in. Like, what are you gonna make with it? I just love getting to see that side of it. And I always love getting to see like the art that you guys make with the art that I make. And it's just such a special cycle that I'm just so thankful to be a part of, so. So yeah, thank you guys so much. I hope to see some of you at Rhinebeck and yeah, I just hope that um, you guys have so much fun with your making and I will see you all next time for a normal style podcast because I have been working on other things than this, <laughs> but um, just to kind of keep it on point with the theme, I just showed you this. So stay tuned for next time and I'll chat with y'all later. Bye.